Okay, so I have my part open already, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the turning side of things because I have a Turning Tuesday videos that I do, and they focus mainly on the two-axis turning side of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and get started. So I am very quickly already in my manufacturing tab. I'm going to go through, and I'm going to set up my turn middle of my Z-axis selected. And for most of you, you're going to look at this part and see this actual counter bore here and think to come from this side. However, in this case, I'm actually going to do the back side first, because in the case that I have a sub spindle, I may not have orientated positions, and I can actually switch that up. So let's go ahead and flip our Z. Now my Z is based on my back side. Again, a lot of these things, as I say in my other videos, you're not overly going to adjust unless you need to. My stock size seems to be working quite well for me here. I'm going to keep it very default for this part. So let's get in here, get our facing cycle going. We're going to just use an 80 degree roughing tool and what i am going to have to do is turn on multiple passes and then let's get our od rough In the case of our od rough because uh, i would be chucked up on this flange pretty far i'm actually only going to go to a selected face it's going to be the backside face here and then i would like to go past that you know maybe 0.1 and not to mention the fact that I'm also not going to allow grooving. And the reason for that is, is I don't want that waterfall effect after the backside of my part. Seeing how my part, my stock is the exact same size, we could go ahead and adjust my setup in the event that your stock was much larger. Let's say we're going with a three quarter inch piece of material. And again, I'm going to regenerate everything with control G. What I'm mainly focusing on here is just getting my outside roughing done so that we could start to look at the milling side of things. So again, we went turning profile rough. We're gonna move into a turning profile finish. Most of you are gonna notice that I'm leaving a lot of my settings or using derive to push things through automatically. So let's go ahead and do a fixed lead direction, allowing us to come all the way back and out of our part and give us that nice OD turn. So now that we've quickly got down to the point of actually cutting our flat and drilling our holes, this is where the actual turn mill side of things are gonna come in. So what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna look weird for some of you, but we're gonna actually switch from the turning tab because this is just turning tool pass with the exception of drilling. However, I like to think this is only on center drilling in the turning area. And we're gonna go milling. And with the milling tab, I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna do a 2D contour. Again, these flats aren't crazy. I'm just going to come in and cut them. The key element is that we're using very, very simple tools to create the profiles and the geometry we want to cut. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a, let's go with 3 8 flat. We're going to go ahead and say that's aluminum slotting just because we are going to be taking a full width cut. And now I'm going to turn on tool orientation. So this is the key element when we're doing our mill turn especially when we're working coming in from the radius side versus the axial side of my part. So I'm gonna pick my Z axis. X axis does matter, but most of the post processors in Fusion will actually orientate your X axis automatically. If you have some weird things going on, as you can see, I can define my X axis. But let's go ahead and pick our contours now. So I'm picking my two edges of my contour. And one thing I'm making sure is that that red arrow is of course on the inside not the outside. In the event it is on the wrong side, I could always just click that red arrow and get it flipped to the other side. As you can see also, if I get click happy, I could always go in and remove those additional geometries and get them back to where they are. Another neat thing you could do is if you double click your open chain here, for example, I can uncheck reverse, bringing it back the other way. So again, as I'm gonna go in, add that other chain back in, and just like that, we're going to be coming in and we're going to be cutting that flat. The only problem I see here is I'm actually starting on my part when I do this, which is going to cause a problem. And we can see that in our simulation right now. I'm going to go ahead and simulate, and we're going to notice that I'm plunging into my material and then coming across. Again, causing problems. I also have a little bit of a linking problem there where we're jumping all the way up to our retract and back down, and we could fix that. So we're gonna go back into our 2D contour. I'm gonna to go to my passes tab. And one thing I can do is I can actually do a tangential extension. And in this case, that 3 8 end mill, 
Normally, I would go, you know, half the end mill, but to make it easy, I'm going to go 0.2. And now you can see my flat is actually extended for my contour. The next thing I could do is, again, is I don't want to rapid retract all the way up and come back down. I also personally, I'm not going to do a vertical lead in, so we can modify that. Keep it in that mindset, green, red, and orange, or yellow lines are all linked in our linking tab. So the first thing I'll remove is my vertical lead in. Again, if you're doing this quite often, guys, I would highly recommend you click the three little dots and you save that as a user default so that you don't have to change it every single time. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on keep tool down. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now, as you can see, we come down into our part, we come across and we come back out cutting that profile. Now, one thing some people are gonna question is what if I wanted to use wear compensation on my tool? Again, super easy to go into Fusion 360. That's a part of the pass. We're gonna change it from in computer to wear or inverse wear, depending on how you like to modify it at your controller. But you can set that up at any time to give you that D value in your post. So let's now change over and let's go ahead and do our drilling cycle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into drill I'm gonna swap out my drill to whatever size drill bit I need. I believe on this guy, I'm going to need a 266. And one thing we will have to check is to make sure that our tool is a live tool and not a stationary tool. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick my whole face. I'm gonna tell it pick all of the same size whole faces. So as you're seeing, it's going all the way around my part and picking all of those automatically. And then from there, we do want that actual drill bit to go through the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and say drill tip through bottom. And then if you notice here, because of the chamfer, I'm not quite making it all the way to the bottom. So I'm gonna just go ahead and compensate that with some breakthrough. So 0.2 is completely overkill. Let's back that up just to 0.1. Now I'm breaking through that flange, making sure that I'm all the way through for when we go ahead and do the backside of this part. So at this point, I've gone ahead and I've actually roughed the outside of my part. I came in and I milled just one of those flats. I'm gonna go ahead and do a pattern here in a second, which is gonna allow me to do the other flat. And that will open up the fact that instead of having to make multiple operations, I'm just patterning one operation. So again, as you see there, there was my cleaning pass, there's my flat. We're gonna go ahead and punch all those holes in there. And then we're gonna be basically ready to rock and roll with the exception of fixing that one flat. So let's go ahead and fix that flat. So again, here is the flat that I milled on one side. If I go up to the top under setup, I have new pattern. This is gonna be a circular pattern. I need to give it a center axis. So I pick the center of my part. Number of instances two. And now you can see how we're doing that all the way around my part on both sides. So now that I did the back side of my part, actually the front side of my part in this case, let's go ahead and go in and grab it and then move to our sub spindle to do any other operations. So again, I'm gonna go back to my turning tab and I'm gonna go to part handling. And what I need to do is a grab. The cool thing here is, again, very visual, right? So I'm gonna grab from the stock front. Actually, that's my feed plane. So we're gonna wrap it in. And then how far into my part do I wanna grab? So I prefer to say something like model front and then give it a distance of how far in do I really wanna grab. So in this case, it needs to be a negative integer because we're grabbing negative into my part. And as you can see, that is almost too far. I'm gonna grab onto that flange and I don't wanna do that. I wanna stay down here on the actual shank. So let's go ahead and change this out to a three quarters of an inch grab. And again, this just makes it easy if I'm cutting my soft jaws on my tail stock or my sub spindle, I should say, on that machine. Few things that you could do is we could stop the spindle. We could also use a parts catcher. We don't need the parts catcher yet because we're just grabbing on. So now that we've grabbed on, in the case of what I'm doing here is I'm gonna do what's called, I like to call a slug transfer. So this is just one piece of material. It's not a bar feed move. I just wanna come in, grab it, and then return. So we're gonna go ahead and do our return now. And what we need to make sure is that we're unclamping so that we could return back to our machine position of our needs. So we're gonna return back to the stock front. It's gonna pull out and then we'll wrap it home or we will go to a predetermined position based on our post. With one thing left to do, all we need to do is post out our G code and kind of verify that everything is working. 
So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna post out my whole setup. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my post processor. I'm going to just go grab a simple turning post and I'm gonna use the deuce on mill turn post for this, knowing that it has a Y axis in it. A couple of tips here for you guys. You can actually change some of your home positions here to make so your machine doesn't waste time in between cycles. Or if I don't want to retract all the way to, you know, machine home, I could actually sit in a working position. There's something that you don't see here that you would like. By all means, you guys can reach out to me with a link down below, and we will get that added to your post as soon as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and hit post process. We successfully posted our G code, of course. And given this is a FANUC post, you're going to see we have right out the start our sub spindle return. I'm actually going to jump way down to the bottom where we do our grab and retract. So again, here is my spindle grab. Here is all my cycles, my synchronizing, my unclampings, and then from there, my return factor to get back to the home position. So this B negative 875, we did tell the software we wanted to go three quarters of an inch in, but my offset is set from the front of my stock, not the front of my part. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of a weird math here. If you're somebody that prefers to use the front of your part, that's completely doable as well to get those numbers so that they look exact. So guys, that pretty much wraps up a real quick crash course on how to do mill turn operations with Fusion 360. Again, if you want to dive deeper into the two axis lathe series that I have turning Tuesdays, we also have a milling series milling Mondays nonetheless, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button so that you can get the latest updates when we release this content. And as always, have a great rest of your day.